All right, let's start section, um, continue chapter three with section three, four, and we're gonna find the real zeros of a polynomial function. So real zeros mean there are real numbers. Um, so this gets rid of complex, uh, the imaginary roots. Um, so let's see, if a polynomial for degree n greater than zero, so the power is greater than zero, um, has m not necessarily distinct, not necessarily distinct, just distinct just means you can have repeats, right? Those are the zeros with multiplicity. So it has m real zeros, which is not the same as the power, notice that, c1 through cm. Then by the factor theorem, um, we can rewrite f of x as factors with all the zeros. So we'll have the first zero, second zero, up to m zeros, and there might be another polynomial left over that has no zeros, no real zeros. Um, so q of x is a polynomial, and then n must be greater than or equal to m. So the degree is greater than the number of zeros, or equal. That's the main idea here. And I'll summarize that below because in math it's a little confusing right now. So what this tells us is that the main idea is the polynomial function of degree n has at most n zeros. So that is the most number of real zeros we can have. So a third degree polynomial can have up to three, right? A fourth degree polynomial can have up to four. Up to is the keyword. So what this tells us is it's possible to not have any zeros because that would be less. If we think about x squared plus one, if we were to solve that, right, it's x squared equals negative one, so my zeros are plus or minus i. So it has imaginary zeros, but no real zeros. Which is less than the degree of two. So the degree is two with zero, zero real zeros. It's possible to have up to n. So this tells me this next polynomial, x cubed minus 4x can have up to three real zeros. It doesn't mean it has three real zeros, but let's factor it to check. So we can factor out an x, and then we get x squared minus four, which is x plus two, x minus two. So this one has three real zeros, zero, negative two, and two. It wouldn't be possible to have four. We can't go past three for the power of three. And then why? This is kind of an interesting new rule. Um, if the degree n is odd, then we have to have at least one real zero. And why is that? And that's because imaginary or complex zeros come in pairs. So we might have like x, x squared plus one, right? So the x squared plus one makes complex, so the extra x will have to give us another zero. So anytime we have an odd power, we're guaranteed to have at least one real zero, which can help us with graphing. So let's go over different processes um, for finding these real zeros. Um, obviously we still have the quadratic formula, so I just copied that over in case we need a refresher. Anytime we have a quadratic, we can use the quadratic formula, right? This only works for ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Um, we, in this chapter, we're going to see a lot of polynomials with higher powers. So we're going to have to figure out how to deal with x cubed, x to the fourth, and that's what we'll get into. So as powers get larger, they're gonna, polynomials will become more challenging to factor, and we don't have any nice formulas anymore. Um, so we're going to use synthetic division to guess and check. So how can we guess and check? We want to make educated guesses, um, and the rational zero theorem tells me how to make educated guesses. Because we don't want to just guess any number. Because we'll just be doing long division forever, right, if we just guess numbers. So this is going to give us a technique to guess and check, um, but it's going to narrow down the pool of numbers to guess. 
So we're gonna have um, P over S is going to be a rational number, which we will talk about in a second. This is gonna be our guesses basically in a second. Um, and it's in lowest terms, meaning it's simplified, right? Simplified fraction. And it's a zero of this function. Um, if P is an integer factor of the constant A zero, so we're going to take factors of a0 for my numerator. You can see that below. And then the denominator will be factors of the leading coefficient. An integer factor basically just means we have a plus or minus. So it'll be plus or minus factors of a0, the constant, plus or minus factors of an, the leading term. And what this tells us that if we have a rational number as a zero, it will fit this pattern. Um, it doesn't mean there is one. It just means if there is one, it will fit this pattern. It does not tell us for sure that there is one. Um, it's still possible that we have no zeros or we have complex or even irrational zeros. So irrational doesn't fit a fraction pattern. So that'd be like square root five. Um, so we call these possible zeros, and we're going to take these possible zeros and just use synthetic division to guess and check. Um, so I think right now it probably doesn't make sense, so we're just going to jump into an example to make sense of this. So what we're going to find is we're going to find the possible zeros using this theorem. I think after an example it will make more sense. So we're going to take factors of a0, so we have x cubed minus x squared minus 10x minus 8. So we're going to take factors of 8, I'm going to put the plus and minus on the outside, divided by factors of just 1 since there's no coefficient. So that'll be plus or minus, and then factors would be like 8, 4, 2, and 1, because those all go into 8. And then the only factor for 1 is 1. And so then we just kind of divide. So we have plus or minus 8, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1. So this tells us that if we were to have a rational 0, meaning not complex or not irrational, then it will be one of these 8 numbers. Or if we have more than one, it'll be these numbers. Otherwise, we would have a complex or irrational. Right, so this doesn't tell us all zeros. It only tells us rational zeros. So we can use synthetic division to check. Um, normally what I do is I start plugging a couple numbers in. Um, I it doesn't matter which one. I usually start with smaller numbers because I find them easier, but it doesn't matter. Um, so we'll just plug a couple in really fast, like f of 1. Um, if we want to do this a little faster, I'm just going to pull out the calculator to make it go a little faster. So we'll do 1 cubed. You can use any scientific calculator. You do not need a graphing calculator at all. 1 squared is just 1, right? We technically don't need to do this. But I just want you to visually see what I'm plugging in. Minus 10 times 1, minus 8, which is negative 18, so 1 is not a 0. Let's try negative 1, right? I'm just guessing and checking till I find a 0. Ooh, so negative 1 is a 0. So now we're going to go back to what we've been doing in previous sections. We're going to do long division to find that next polynomial and then see if we can find some more zeros. So remember we put negative 1 on the outside and we put the coefficients on the inside. So 1, negative 1, negative 10, negative 8. First one was 1, negative 1, negative 10, negative 8. 
and we'll go ahead and do long division, or synthetic. So we get one, um, we did negative one times one, right, negative one times one, gave me negative one, we bring that down, all right, we bring that down and we get negative two, negative one times negative two is two, and then we get eight, negative one times eight, oops, no, negative eight, yeah, negative one times negative eight is positive eight, and we get zero, which, again, if it's a zero, this better be zero. So if you're not getting zero here, then something's wrong. All right, so then this will give us a new polynomial, and then we can try to save that one. So we have x cubed minus x squared minus 10x minus 8 is now equal to x plus 1. That's from this for x minus negative 1. And then now we have one degree less. So this was x cubed, so now we have x squared. So we get x squared minus 2x minus 8. And then for me, as soon as I get to a quadratic, I give up um, synthetic at the quadratic and just use um, the quadratic formula or factoring if you can. Quit synthetic at the quadratic. And then just factor if it feels obvious or use the quadratic formula. You could totally keep using synthetic division, but it might not get you anywhere because we might have um, complex or irrational. So it's better to just jump to the quadratic or factoring. I'm gonna factor just because this one does factor and I think we could all use practice, but you're totally welcome to use the quadratic formula. So factoring, so we need a product of negative eight and a sum of negative two. So like four and two would make eight. So what would that be? Negative four and then positive two, right? Those multiply to make negative eight and they add up to negative two. And then that means if you had done long division with negative two, which also fits the pattern, or positive four, it would have worked as well and you would have just had a different quadratic in the end. So we found all the zeros. The zeros are negative one, four, and negative two. And there's three of them, which is equal to the degree. So it'd be impossible to get four, but we could have gotten one or two or none, but three is the max we could get. So we'll try more of these. Um, with practice, this will get easier.